golf, the 10th most played sport in the world and America's favorite pastime, with some minor modifications. By all means, hitting a ball with a stick really hard is one of life's most simple pleasures, but getting the ball afterwards is really hard. The most common solution to this problem is a hand-driven ball collector, which can be kind of scary and a little unsafe. Oh. This was the motivation for our team's project, to make a fully autonomous golf ball collector, one that doesn't put lives in stake, is environmentally friendly, relatively cheap, and most of all, technically advanced. This is the Autonomous Golf Ball Collector. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, because before we had this final model, before the CAD, the long reports, the research, we were just five engineers. So let us introduce ourselves. Hi, my name is Anthony Tribolsi, and I am our project's manufacturing lead and in charge of vehicle aspects. My name is Todd Taparowski. I was the administrative lead and in charge of the collection system. My name is Salim Jabara. I'm the programming lead, design lead, and CAD lead. Hey, my name is Josh Gentry. I'm the Gantt chart manager as well as power and propulsion lead. Hi, it's me again. Uh, we had five people. Only four people made this project though. The last guy didn't pass Senior Design 1. So our project's problem was to create a semi-autonomous golf ball collection machine. And our main motivation behind this is to take all of our skills and backgrounds and approach this exciting problem with the aspect of being able to not only solve it, but serve an industry that has a huge potential with a huge profit margin. After completing some preliminary research, we came up with requirements for our system, including but not limited to staying within a certain boundary, collecting golf balls on a variety of terrain, and having the option to autonomously move. While doing the research, our team also found an area of possible improvement compared to what's on the market now. Currently, most collectors only collect golf balls while traveling in one direction. So our team tasked ourselves to solve this problem as well. Now knowing all our requirements, we're ready to start brainstorming design ideas. During this stage, we came up with a ton of different ideas and consistently were in communication with our stakeholder. This was pivotal for our project as we wanted to make sure it was built exactly how our stakeholder wanted it. Our team did a great job with this, making sure to ask lots of questions to fully understand what they wanted. One example of this came up when designing the programming for the robot. We came into a what if situation, which was if the robot should rather leave the boundaries to get a ball in a weird area or risk just not getting the ball. Our stakeholder said it's more important for the robot not to leave the boundaries than it is to collect all the balls. And we took this into all of our future planning. After making lots of iterations of our CAD model, we began testing it using SOLIDWORKS simulations. We made sure to thoroughly test the ground interface, collector system, and frame as these were areas our stakeholders wanted assurance about before moving to the physical construction of the machine. For the construction, our team completed it in four phases. Vehicle, collector, energy, and coding. So for our physical construction, we started with the frame. We decided to use 2020 steel cut T-frames that we can both mount, cut, extrude, and attach with little press fittings that are about M5 and uh, M6 all throughout our entire machine. With that being said, some of our tools did break, which posed a huge challenge on the project. <laughs> it broke! After we constructed our frame, a big part that we needed to worry about was how we were gonna attach both our casters and our wheels to our machine. We had to create a, an attachment point for our motors that did not exist. So we had to both craft and create a part that we could manufacture in a machine lab that would both attach to our motors, but also attach our casters up front. After having most of the vehicle made, it was time to figure out how we're gonna do the collection system to get all these golf balls. We made our collection drum out of laser cut wood to ensure precision. Even with this in mind, we quickly ran into one of our first challenges, which was that after assembling the drum, the gaps between each panel varied in width. That's not ideal. To combat this, we tested different lengths between all the gaps. It looks like the sweet spot's somewhere in here. From there, was a lot more tests and minor modifications. Test two. Test three. So we'll just tighten it a little more. Test four. So this is working. Test five. I think we made a golf ball collector, man. After the drum, we worked on the drum holder, which had a lot of evolutions on its own. It's not good. Lastly were the remover dogs, which we wanted to work in both directions. 
We were able to achieve this by allowing the dogs to give away if pushed in one direction, while becoming rigid and static if the collector moves in a different direction. We made the machine electrically powered and went with two 6,000 milliamp hour 22.2 LiPo batteries to power the motors and one 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack to run the Raspberry Pi and camera. The batteries were selected based on the voltage and amp requirements of the motors and the computer. By giving each of the motors its own battery, as well as giving the computer its own power source, it allowed us to simplify the circuit system and greatly reduce the likelihood of any type of electrical malfunction that could cause damage to any of the more expensive components. When it came to the motors, we selected two 350 watt DC brushed motors with 1.2 newton meters of torque and 3000 RPM. Due to the weight of the machine, which was nearly 100 pounds, the motors need to have a high enough torque rating to move the machine while operating in all types of terrain and grades. As the lead programmer, I wrote the code that operates the robot. The first challenge that I faced was using ROS, the robot operating system, to program the robot to run autonomously. Due to the electronic parts getting delayed by weeks, I ran out of time to create the scripts were necessary to operate the machine in that manner, and so I switched to semi-autonomous operation. The next challenge I faced was interfacing with the motors. I initially gave them too much power, and the solution was setting a limiter to ensure that they did not go too fast. The final major challenge of programming the robot was the slow data transfer rate between the Pi and my phone. I solved this issue by adding a try accept block to allow the robot to skip empty control messages and operate faster. Once we were done with each sub-assembly, we were able to attach everything and begin testing, which had challenges of its own. So far so good, I'm gonna make the motors go forward. It's kind of scary. Our testing plan was to first test just the electronics and code, then implement everything in a safe and controlled space. And lastly, when it was ready to test completely, test in the grass terrain that was expected for the final review. During the testing of our motors, one of the first issues we ran into was one of the motors using too much power. This was due to a Raspberry pinout issue, and once solved, they ran correctly. But this also caused the problem of the machine being damaged in some parts, which had to be rebuilt. During times like this, it can be really discouraging, but I think our team handled everything very well. Everyone had a great sense of humor, and I think our combined want to make the best product possible motivated each other to keep going. After taking a second look at the electronics and redesigning the motors, we had a successful control test and we were ready to begin full system tests in the field. We noticed that during our first field test that our motors were incredibly underpowered and that we need to go back and revamp the power going to our motors, but also we realized that our collection system was acting as a giant brake system because of the fact that it shifted in transportation and was not allowing the discs to rotate. After doing some quick redesigns on that system, we went to a field in that we learned the very humble mistake of we need to charge our batteries to a more efficient capacity before using and testing. After several different evolutions and generations of our design, we decided to come up with several different tests to really find the efficiency of our system and see how well we actually accomplished our goal. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> yes! And it's moving! Burnt the motor. Oh no, that smells really bad. Go, oh, baby, keep your oh. 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 Okay. So it should not collect it, but hold it. Oh! Yeah. Oh! Oh! Wait! Wait! Ah! <laughs> You're so good! That doesn't smell very good, though. Yeah! Yeah, boy, I got some of them. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Okay, stop, okay. stop, 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 oh. catch fire. Autonomous mode? Oh! oh. Hey. Nope! The phone! Oh. <laughs> On our most recent test, some of our greatest strengths were the frame, the collector system, and the dogs, as well as the code that ran everything. This project could be used in the future for all kinds of autonomous projects such as fruit picking, lunar exploration, and anything that has to do with golf or programming robots that operate remotely. We can see this technology being used this way because this is a semi-autonomous rover that operates remotely 
and does tasks from a distance while using the camera to see through it. Throughout this project, our team has learned a lot. We utilize physics and dynamics to determine how to move the machine and how it would be behave while moving. We use CAD software and FEA to design and evaluate potential downfalls within the structural integrity of the machine. We used electrical engineering principles to design a sound electrical system that safely connected all of the electrical components. We expanded our knowledge of programming to design a code framework to allow the machine to move with minimal user interaction. We used manufacturing engineering practices to 3D print and laser cut our own parts. And these were just some of the many skills that we used and honed while working on this project. Aside from the engineering skills, there were others such as shop work, time management, teamwork, and interpersonal skills that will benefit us as we transition from the academic setting into the professional engineering world. Sound good? Let's go right end the video. Oh, cool. <laughs>